In this session, we're going to look at adding first person viewer controls to an object. So it will give you a sense that you're walking around. Later on in other tutorials, you'll be able to develop your own character. But how do we get the physics into the game to start with? Just so we're able to move around an environment and feel like we're actually a part of a scene. So let's get under the way. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a floor. So I'm going to create a cube and just place that on the stage. I'm just going to X scale it up to say 20, uh, 1 and 20. This will give me a floor. I'm going to create a folder called uh, materials. And this way we can actually put our materials in it. And in here we're going to create a new material. And this will allow us to color the floor. So I'm just going to call this floor. So it's the material for the floor. And I can pick any color I want out of the array. I'm just going to pick something that looks a little bit uh, like grass in a way. So just click out, drop that onto the floor, and there we go. So when I hit play now, I should have a very big sort of platform I'm looking at. But at the moment, I can't move around. I can't see anything. So now what I want to do is just change the cube to floor. And that way the names all match up. And now what I want to do is add a character. So once again, I'm going to a 3D object. And I'm just going to add a cylinder. You could add a capsule if you want to. And just drag that up a little bit. So this is going to be me in a way. So this will be me and I'll be able to walk around. So I could skin a different color, but I'll just leave it white because it's going to contrast anyway. So I could make a material for it. So that's me at the moment sitting out there on the floor. But what I want to do is actually give first person perspective. So I'll be looking from that cylinder. So to do that, what we need to do is go to assets and actually import one of the packages that are in built, which is characters. This is much the same as if you download some assets from the asset store and we're gonna just import everything. There are a lot of different assets in there and you can go through them and select the ones out that you really wanna um, import. In our tutorial, we're just gonna bring them all in. But if you're developing a game or if you're making a mobile app, it's a really good idea that you only import things that you're gonna use so it doesn't bloat the file at the end. Now that the import is finished, when I click on assets, you'll actually see there's two folders. There's one called um, materials and the other one is the standard assets. I'm going to create a new folder and I call it project. It's a good idea that I put all my materials inside the project folder. So the things that I create go into project. This imported assets, they can sit outside of my project file. So now what I want to do is bring up the character controls. Now to do that, I go into the very first folder, then go into characters, and then what I want to do is go into first person characters, and then I want to go into the prefabs. In the prefabs, you will actually find the FPS controller. Grab that and drag that out and drop it onto the hierarchy. You'll see that a whole lot of camera views just appeared. You'll also notice that there's a secondary camera here, which is the main camera. We're just going to click on that and delete that camera. So now the only camera that's on stage is the one that's coming from our person. You can see the direction that we're looking at the moment. So if I wanted to, I can lift that camera up and you can see there's a camera icon there. And I'm just gonna place it right on the top. So you can see the perspective that I'll be looking from. So when I actually run the game now, and I want you to have a look at this first, you can actually hear this player controls. Oh, I'm now looking around at my body, and then as I walk around, you can actually turn around. You can hold down shift and run, space bar to jump, and the normal sort of physics play. So your mouse will control where you're viewing. So what I want to do now is actually attach the player controller, or the FPS controller, to the cylinder, which is going to be my person. So I'm just going to push escape to get control of my mouse again, and push the play to stop it. I'm going to go up to cylinder, change cylinder to person, you can either name it here by just clicking on it and renaming it, or you can actually change it up in the inspector panel here. Now what I want to do is make person a sub part of FPS controller. So I'm just bringing it down and letting it go. Oop, missed it. Bring it down and let it go. You can actually see now that those objects together, when I collapse the folder, you see it disappear inside a FPS controller. Now these are actually joined together. If I turn my Z axis, my x-axis, or go back to my y-axis, you can see the camera is all sitting on top. If you right mouse click and go back to free, you'll get back the normal view. So when I run it now, 
as the character moves, the cylinder will move with it. So I'm actually on top of the cylinder looking around as if it's my body, and as I walk around, you can see that I'm moving. Now because the camera is actually placed on top of the cylinder, I can't actually zoom backwards to show you that I'm the cylinder and the cylinder is moving with me, but you can see it popping up and down in the bottom of the window, showing that they're associated together. So I'm just pushing escape and going back. So that gives you an idea of how to actually start building a character. So if I wanted to make a person, I would then put more assets or game objects underneath person. So this is a sub part of the FPS controller. And you notice that it's a good idea to use your hierarchy and make sure you use folders, etc., just to organize your objects as you go along. So remember about creating folders using the FPS controller. You can add the FPS controller only to one object on the stage. You can't have multiple of them. So make sure you select wisely and have fun moving around your worlds in a first person perspective. If you like this tutorial, give it a like, subscribe to my channel and have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful tutorials on Unity.